All right, so let's say we, we do want to abandon Earth and we don't care what happens because the sun's going to destroy it, whatever. What do we do about that? How do we build civilization in space, I guess? Yeah, so the question is, is it actually feasible yeah. if it's going to take us a thousand years to get to another planet to do it? Yeah. And this is the idea of the so-called generation ship. Um, how would you cope with a thousand year voyage? I mean, well, clearly no one's going to survive a thousand years. Exactly. Um, so the idea would be to maybe send a very large ship with hundreds or thousands of people on it. And those people will not get to see more than the first 10% of the voyage. But, but they would have children, hopefully, and their children will see the next 10% of the voyage. And after 50 generations, uh, then their great, 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 great. So you're essentially just talking about a mass migration of people in space. That's right. I mean, humans have done similar yeah. mass migrations yeah. in the past. Yeah. Like when the indigenous Australians first came to Australia, it probably took them tens of thousands of years. It to wasn't make it. an overnight trip. That's right. Yeah, of course, they would set up a village somewhere and then wait till the population grew and then move to another village and that's slowly right. work their way around the coast. So you can do trips these this far. Um, but I mean, immediately problems become yeah. obvious. I mean, the ship has to be very big. And maybe you can do this with atom bombs because you're not going to want to live in a tiny capsule for 50 generations. That's right, exactly. Um, how stable would a society be? I mean, just imagine yeah, yeah. what societies on Earth have changed over the last 1,000 years. I mean, I mean uh, <laughs> think about how hard it was for people during COVID lockdowns, right? I mean, that was a couple of months at times, you know. Uh, it's a big ask. Yes, I mean, you could easily imagine a society degenerating to savagery, and in fact, many science fiction novels yes. had exactly this plot. Or who knows what would happen? They might decide to turn around, get religious revelation. We need to go back to the Earth halfway through. And, and I guess, and, and this is coming, and the point is, even if it can be technically possible, you run into all these other issues. And there's an ethical issue. I mean, yeah. presumably, everyone on board to begin with is a volunteer. That's right. Um, but even if the first generation of volunteers, they're then condemning not merely their children, but their grandchildren, and their great-grandchildren, and many other generations who will have no choice. That's right. They're going to be on a rocket traveling at 0.1% of the speed of light towards Proxima Centauri, and nothing they can do they're, to change that. They can't say, no, I'm going to go back and move home. No, there is no backing and there is no home. So, and of course, we've talked about long-duration space flight and all yes. the health problems. I mean, one thing you're going to need is you need some form of artificial gravity. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and this will probably be done by spinning a spacecraft to give for a centrifugal force. So here's one proposal, which is have a big ring with people living on the inside. And, and that's kind of that classic science fiction view, right? You have this big ring. But I guess, you know, as we talked about in the health stuff, the gravity still solves some of it, but it doesn't even solve everything. Yes. So you could have something like the, yeah. uh, the giant... Uh, um, we might be living in these in the asteroid belt at some point in the next hundred years anyway, in yeah. which case if you've already lived in one of these in the asteroid belt, why not that is this on the way to Proxima <laughs> Centauri? And this might not be so bad if you actually have a giant spinning cylinder with uh, plants and things inside. Um, I mean, I, I guess it's... Still, getting, it's 50 generations. Yeah, it, it's... Uh, I mean, if you think about a thousand years ago humanity on Earth, right? I mean, a lot has changed. Indeed. Um, and there's an overtaking problem. Yeah, I love this problem. So, I mean, you're going to need a really strong motivation to go there. Yes. And if you think about why settlers moved to new continents in the past, yeah. it's usually either they want to escape from something or they want to set up paradise. That's right. So you could imagine a religious organisation deciding they want to go somewhere and set up their own religion somewhere else, or the earth is controlled by a totalitarian artificial intelligence and you want to escape. That's right. Or they've fixed uh, humans never die of old age and so Rupert Murdoch still runs the world um, so um, <laughs> let's not be too frightful here uh, <laughs> so let's say you set off you, yep. you've decided you've we're going I'm going I'm going and you're going to set up a new like the Pilgrim Fathers in America you're going to set up a new Bradtopia uh, Bradtopia and you set off okay and your great 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 grandchildren are going to get there in a thousand years time. And, and Bradtopia is going to be the best thing ever that's right yes but after you leave, people on Earth keep inventing new technology, and a yeah. hundred years later, they've improved the speed by 20%. Yeah, I guess that's possible. Not, not, un I mean, not unreasonable. I mean, if you think about a hundred years ago, we can go got off... 20% yeah. bigger atom bombs to propel the whole thing. I've better technology, yeah, I mean... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't mean, think you need a hundred years, probably just need ten in some cases. Yeah, and then let's say my descendants decide to get off and they want to have Paultopia, which is a bit opposite of Bradtopia. Um, and so they set off. Um, and faster. their rockets start 100 years after you, but it's 20% faster. So they fly past you <laughs> partway, and by the time you arrive at Proxima Centauri, my civilization is already 100 years established. So Bradtopia is a slave to Paltopia once again. Yes, yeah, so you might then, okay, we'll go on somewhere else. 
But then we have to restart the process. And I guess this is a really practical but very realistic problem is if you're just developing and sending missions, this is going to happen. Just as inevitably, we will build a craft that passes Voyager, yes, right? right? You know, Voyager is fast now, but we will build something in a hundred years at least that will go past it. That's right. But there are other possibilities. Yeah. I mean, one is some form of suspended animation. We can't freeze humans yeah. and revive them, but there are other animals you can freeze and That's revive. Right. And so it may be possible to do some sort of medical intervention to make it possible to freeze humans. In that case, you just have a ship full of ice tanks yeah. and de defrost us under robot control when we get to the other end. And it doesn't matter, that's right. Um, so that may be possible. Um, another possibility is embryos and artificial wombs. That uh, maybe if you can have some sort of artificial womb, you can have embryos that you store and then have robots bringing them up when they get there. That saves you having the 50 generations in the that's middle. That's true. Um, the technological and ethical challenges are enormous for this. But, yes. Um, another possibility is, of course, the human brain is a large, large collection of interconnected neurons. Maybe we right. scan Brad's brain and duplicate it in software. All yeah. the same connections, it would think it's you. Yeah. Um, and that's something you could just... Turn on, I guess. Yeah. Turn on when you get there or... Yeah. Um, or life, or life extension. Life, yeah. So it could well be that in another hundred years, our life expectancy is 10,000 years, in which case a thousand years... It doesn't matter. It exactly. doesn't matter so much. And then we can make that choice to say, I'm going to give a thousand of my 10,000 years to get there. I don't need the generations. I don't need all of this. That's right. So there are possibilities. And again, we're talking very science fiction-y here. But, you know, it's, it's if you give humanity another hundred, five hundred, a thousand years, maybe? Mm-hmm. 